Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Uh, Darling, you're not getting up uh, already, are you? Oh! You were asleep, David. Yeah. Go ahead, darling. Sleep some more if you like. I'm going to get up. Oh, what's the big rush today? We don't have Gertrude anymore, remember? No Gertrude, no Gertrude. How sad. Oh, so sad. Bertha and Fritz will be coming tomorrow, but in the meantime, there's a lot to be done. Ah, uh, enumerate. Well, we want to get the house cleaned up nicely, the beds made, Fritz and Bertha's room ready, and the baby's fed and out. And there's cooking to be done, uh, and... Hey, what are you doing getting back into bed? I'm exhausted just thinking about it. Get up, get up, woman. There's work to be done. Oh, all right, but I'm dead on my feet. Frankly, I'd rest more if it weren't that I want to get down to the kitchen and make breakfast before Mama does. Well, that's a noble thought. Yep. This is one day I'm not going to let Mama beat me to the draw. I'm sick and tired of that woman doing all the work around here. Ah, she likes it. I like it, too. But that's not enough reason for her to keep on doing it. Is it? It is not. Mm, I was afraid you'd say that. I'm going to brush my teeth, then go downstairs and get breakfast going and work like an express train. No stops. You mean to say breakfast will be all ready for me by the time I get downstairs? It will be. Oh, where's the toothpaste? David, where'd you put the toothpaste last night? On the medicine chest, where it belongs. Oh, why do you have to go and be so neat? It's such a waste of time. Mm, don't you love toothpaste first thing in the morning? I can't hear what you're saying. I said, don't you love toothpaste first thing in the morning? Oh, wonderful. You up yet? I'm very much up. I even have an idea. We'll no. go out to dinner, yes. We'll go out to dinner, and that's one chore off your list. I'd love to go out for dinner. What do we do with the baby? Oh, now, where's my comb? Yeah. Oh, here it is. We'll take the baby along. High time he stepped out into society. Oh, I wouldn't mind. Mama would be conscience-stricken. It's no way to bring up a child, she'd say. Well, Mama's right, but who cares? She cares. I'll have to find out if there's a babysitter in the community. If she's cute, you take the baby and I'll stay at home, Fine huh? Fine by me. Maybe the male woman would know of a babysitter. Whatever happens, that child is not going to interrupt the natural course of our lives. I should hope not. If we want to go out to dinner, we go out to dinner, and he can fend for himself. Poor child. He has to have more fenders than a car. All right. I'm ready to go down and cook. David, what are you... What on earth have you done? Oh, I haven't done anything. David, this is awful. What is? You've gone and done the beds. Well, this is the day when all good men must pitch in and help. But you pitch too much. Look what you've done. And uh, what have I done? You've gone and unmade them, torn them all apart. I only did what you do every day. Well, that's different. You mean today you uh, weren't going to unmake the bed? You well, were just going to re-tuck the men, huh? Well, mine was hardly even mussed up. Yeah. I slept very carefully on purpose. On purpose because there's no Gertrude today, maybe? Mm, maybe. You little cheat, tearing the beds apart when there's someone else to put them together. David, don't look at me like that. I'm very fussy about beds generally. I know, today, that's why I pull them apart. I tell you, it's different today. Usually I have Gertrude. Now I have only me. You are abysmal. All right, I'm blushing. Now are you satisfied? It's dishonest. All I can say is I'm certainly glad I took matters in my own hands. I'm like the princess and the pea. The who and the what? Don't you know the story of the princess who was so delicate that when somebody put a pea under the, the nine mattresses she sleeps on, uh, she woke up all all bruised in the oh, morning. Poor princess. Mm -hmm. And poor me. Look at this room. Blankets out the window, sheets all over the chair, the pillows out of all the pillowcases. I just thought I'd do you one better. Pay no attention. I'm going to set everything right and never let, uh, never in your life have you seen such a neat bed as I'm going to make this I'll one. probably be so self-conscious I won't be able to sleep. Now, first, I'm going to turn the mattress. But they've been turned. When? Well, Gertrude turned them yesterday, well, only yesterday. if she can yesterday. do it, if she can do it, so can I. Oh, David. Now, I'll just pull up this side. David, be careful. The lamp on the night table is I'll quivering. Pull it up and... The mattress is standing on its side. Oh, David, yeah. don't let it drop. Hmm. Hmm. 
Are you going to stand there all day holding it? Well, what do I do now? You're an architect. You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if I let it fall over that way, it'll hit the night table. Certainly will. Now, the object is to have it fall toward me and away from the lamp. Then huh? you have to run around to the other side of the bed. Now, here, darling, you hold the mattress while I run around. I will not. This was your idea. Mm. Of course, if you would ask my advice, the way to do it is to roll the bottom part of the mattress over towards the head of the bed, then pull the parts of the bottom of the bed out from under like no. a pancake. Well, why didn't you tell me that ten minutes ago? This was all your idea. Oh, David, you're going to miss your train. Well, night table or no, here it goes. Oh! Uh-oh. A bullseye. Did anything break? Of course, everything broke. It must have. All your fault. You wouldn't help me. You're lucky this time. It's only badly bruised. Good. Well, that's one mattress that's turned over. I'm not going to lift a finger to help you with the other. I wouldn't accept a finger. You wouldn't? Now, let's see. Which is the bottom sheet? Here it is. And every corner will be squared, Mrs. Norris. Oh, I like hospital corners no, better. No, no, no. Square corners like the army. Since when is this the army? Oh, it's voice. Thanks. David, don't pull the sheet so tight. You'll rip it. Oh, my best sheet that was. Well, it can't be so good if it tears so easily. It's hmm. Just a little rip. Now ignore it. Just a little rip now, but wait until you catch your foot in it tonight. David, you forgot to put the pad on the bed. Uh-oh. Where does it go? Under the bottom sheet. Since when? Since always. Oh. Well, I'll just slip it in like a letter into an envelope. Huh? Huh. You're not going to sleep very well tonight, princess. Now, wait till I'm finished. You'll be so embarrassed for my talent in bed making, you will never touch another bed. I certainly won't. I'll sleep on the floor. All right, in you go, Pad. Between the sheet and the mattress now. Lie down flat. Hitting it won't help. Well, it knows it's supposed to lie flat. Now, get in there. There we are. Now, I'll I'll tuck in the top corner. Well, where's the other sheet? Right there on the chair. You wouldn't condescend to passing it over to no, me? No, I wouldn't condescend. But I'll pass it over to you. Thanks. You're welcome. Whew! It's a hot day. That's because you're exerting yourself so for once. You know, you really get quite a bit of exercise in making a bed. I, I never realized it. I don't get any exercise making it. Ah, because you cheat. Now, where's the pillow? Right there, right at your feet. Oh. And the pillowcase? Um. Good heavens, it's like trying to get a banana into a, into a banana peel. Doesn't it fit, darling? Claudia, do you have to get pillowcases that are too small to fit the pillow? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a woman trying to fit into a girdle. <laughs> Here, give it to me. Now, I know what you do. You put the pillowcase in your mouth. Oh. I'm going to keep it. I'll do that. Now, don't bite a hole in it. Oh, I've got one corner in. You're getting it in crooked. It'll never fit that way. Oh, it just works. As a matter of fact, you have the top sheet on the bed crooked, well, too. Well, you don't sleep straight up and down in the bed, either. Well, I do. In the beds I make, you, you sleep parallel to the sheet rather than to the mattress. See that you remind me of that tonight. I will. Well, what's the matter with this pillow? I think it over eight. David, standing on your head isn't going to help. Get in there. Oh, you're tearing the pillowcase. Well, now maybe it'll fit. Give it to me, you ruffian. Well, if I do give it to you, it's only because I want to get to the other bed and get on to breakfast. Your poor pride is taking an awful beating this morning, isn't it, darling? Nonsense. Is that how you do it? You fold the pillow? That's right. Once it's inside the pillowcase, I unfold it and tuck the corners in where they belong. Upon my soul and body, it's so simple. Of course it's simple. Why do you think I can do it? It's just know-how that counts. Yeah, stop bragging. Now, where are those confounded blankets? Hanging out the window. Oh, yes. I, I want to shake down before putting them on the bed. What for? Get the dust out of them. What do you think? There isn't any dust up here. This is Eastbrook, Connecticut, not New York, New York. There's dust. Oh, honestly. Mm. You don't have to be so energetic about now, it. Now, get away from me. I, I don't want you tickling. I just want you to stop. You'll be dead all day. <laughs> now, now stop. Get away from me. David, you let go. Hey, catch it. Don't what? let it fall out. Now, now, look what you've done. Oh, what I've done. Mm -hmm. The blanket is sitting on the roof of the breakfast porch. Oh, it looks lovely down there, doesn't it? Pink <laughs> against the green. So becoming. Mm, charming. So colorful. Why can't we always have it? Now, how are you going to get it up? You mean, how are you going to get it up? Or do you want me to drop you out the window no, after I it? Hold your feet. I'll, I'll get it after breakfast. 
But all I can say is it's a good thing there's a man in the house. Yes, isn't it? Without a man, this would never have happened. That's not what I meant. Now, I'm going to make the other bed, and you stay out of my way. All you do is complicate things. David, you're not going to turn the other mattress, are you? Oh, I, I should turn one, turn both. I won't tell anybody if you won't. You can tell anybody you like, anything you like. I should turn this mattress, but, well, you said it's been turned recently. Oh, very recently. Well, very... I'll turn it tomorrow. Oh, that's fine. Here, I'll help you make the bed. I don't need your help now. Of course you don't. I know you don't need it. I'm just well, as long forcing as you, it. As long I, as you don't I want, want to you. help, being an architect is much more strenuous than being a housewife, so don't get ideas. I wouldn't dare. Come in. Well, good morning, you. Good heavens. What's happened to this room? Mom, are you up? Of course I'm up. You've been having a pillow fight or something? Such a ridiculous question. Yes, absolutely absurd. Is it? Don't you like our room? We've been fixing it up specially. No one would guess. Oh, by the way, the strangest thing just happened. Hmm? What happened? Something came floating down past the window. A pink parachute of some kind. Mama, you were dreaming again. I was not. So early in the morning, Grandma. Seeing things. Don't worry, Mama, don't worry. We'll never reveal your secret, will we, David? Never, Claudia, never. Never? Me lips are sealed. Oh, Mine hush too. up, you two. And hurry, the coffee's getting cold. Mama, you haven't gone and made breakfast, have you? I most certainly have. I was going to do it. Well, you're too late now. David, you see what you've done. Now, what have I you done? You made me late. Just this morning, why do you have to go and fix up everything? So that's the thanks. I get. A man tries to help his wife by making the beds, and all he gets is abuse. Poor David. Henceforth, I do not raise a finger. Nay, nary a finger. Oh, thank goodness for that. David, where are you going? Back to bed, my love. I am completely exhausted. Hey, don't do that. I have to make it all over again. Oh, David, how could you? After all my work. <laughs> Sometimes impromptu parties turn out to be more fun than the most elaborate prearranged affair. One reason is that nobody has to go to much trouble when a party just grows on the spur of the moment. If you keep plenty of Coca-Cola on ice, you'll find yourself being a successful hostess without having to plan and fuss ahead of time. Just phone a few friends, put out the welcome mat, and pleasant hours lie ahead. How about getting a case of Coke today to be ready for hospitality? Mr. King, could you tell me what's been going on? Well, it's it's a long, long story, Mrs. Brown. Well, it must be to take a long, long story to explain the condition of Claudia and David's room. And uh, the pink parachute? And the uh, pink parachute. But thank goodness we won't have another morning like this one. With Claudia and David, how can you be sure? Because tomorrow Bertha and Fritz will arrive. Oh, Bertha and Fritz coming. Well, that makes it quite a day. I expect it will be quite a moment. See you then, Mr. King. Looking forward to tomorrow. See you then, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>